Hello one and all, this is Soulful Lordy, James Bullock, once again with another video game first impressions. This time around, Evil Dead the Game for the PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, Xbox One, Xbox Series X, and S, PC, and Nintendo Switch. Of course, Evil Dead the Game is a 4v1 asymmetrical multiplayer online experience, though there is some single player options, but you have to be online to play those as well, where you take control of either Ash and some of the legendary characters from the Evil Dead franchise, be it the movies or the television show, or one of the Kandarian demons. As Ash and company move throughout one of the two maps that are available, one based off the first movie and the other based off the television show, they can find a variety of weapons, both long range and melee, like machetes and hatchets and shotguns and even the boomstick. The main point of what you're trying to do is collecting these three map pieces that are randomly scattered throughout the map. Once you find the three map pieces, this unlocks the ability to get one of the two items that will be necessary to take on the dark ones that are looming on the map at all times. The dagger and the lost pages. Now to get the dagger and the lost pages you have to go through these time gauntlets and when you make it past the time you get the dagger, you get the pages and then you can go take on the dark ones. The quote unquote final battle that comes with facing the dark ones is relatively simple and once again is another gauntlet where you have to in the case of the PlayStation 4 or 5 hold down the triangle button to shoot attacks and try to dodge those incoming attacks from the dark ones until you're able to drain them of their health and then you can unlock the Necronomicon. Now this is when the game turns into a defense portion because the Necronomicon can be damaged and if it is completely damaged the demons win but if the survivors can protect the Necronomicon or not die in that minute and a half that they have to survive they are able to defeat the demon horde. Now on the opposite end of the spectrum is one player being able to be a demon. And as the demon moves throughout the map, they gather energy to unlock certain traits and abilities that eventually can turn into some deadly situations for the survivors if they don't know what's going on and if the demon player knows what to do. One of the main things is setting traps. And by setting traps, it will not only make a enemy appear, but will also put fear into the person that set the trap. And once that fear meter reaches the max level in a survivor, they can become possessed if the player has enough energy to do so. And if the character does become possessed, you can use that character to attack their teammates. You can also spawn enemies if you have enough energy and you've upgraded your system, which comes from moving around the map, having successful traps, and landing some good shots. You can have basic, elite, or boss enemies that you can spawn, though the cooldown timer can be pretty detrimental if you utilize some of these minions later on in the mission and the survivors are able to overcome them relatively quickly. Everyone has a special ability associated with not only their character but also their class. For example, Ash from the original Evil Dead is a support class character and his ability is to be able to lower the fear levels of his nearby allies. Whereas one of the demons, in the case of the Warlord, which was my personal favorite, can create a radar that better identifies the location of the survivors in a wider radius for a short period of time. Now, while it's very fun to try out these different characters, see what kind of abilities work for you, who does the best in certain situations, there's also the fact that each character, be it demon or the survivors, has skill trees that you gain experience points, you spend those experience points to gain skill points, and you're able to spend those skill points to improve either the survivors or the demons. It's not separated in terms of where the experience points go depending on what you played as, say the demon or the survivor. You can spend them on whatever you want to spend it on, and the skill points will be solely connected to that thing that you spent it on. One of the biggest things about this game that may be a detriment to gamers who want to play for a long period of time beyond the upgrade system is the fact that, as I mentioned, there are only two maps. And thankfully they are promising that they will add more in the future, but that may not be enough even if the maps are incredibly large. Another issue is the pure unadulterated fact that this game only has one objective on both sides of the fence. Either you're trying to get the map pieces, get the pages, get the dagger, and stop the dark ones if you're a survivor, or you're trying to stop them as a demon. And that's it. There's no other option for victory like it was in, say, Friday the 13th, where you could actually kill Jason 
or the predator. You can kill the predator and win and not just have to escape the map. And the last issue goes back to the leveling system. And that is the fact that I noticed even in the first week or so of playing the game, there can be some big differences between those who have been playing since the game launched who only started playing a week or two after the game's is released. And this wedge, this divide, this schism between the player bases is only going to get wider as the weeks progress. So it's going to be very difficult for new players to get into a game because the matchmaking system doesn't separate gamers by levels, be it profile level or character level. Technically, thankfully, the game has actually been very good. Beyond the fact there is a jump button that doesn't work during certain scenarios like trying to jump over a rock, but you can jump over a guardrail it is a big detriment. But in terms of like crashes and game breaking bugs, though I did have one weird glitch where as a demon my control went away after possession went wrong. And I couldn't use the bumper button so I couldn't summon the minions and I was pretty much stuck being unable to do anything. In terms of single player offerings, there's not much. The missions mode pretty much recreates certain scenes from the television show and movies that features no in-game cutscenes, no footage from the actual movies, just static still shot pictures with text as you take control of one character, facing a horde of enemies like you would if you had a group of people with you. It's frustrating, it can be long-winded, and it's pretty much a session of trial and error. Though it does reward you with new characters that are very beneficial if you can make it through mission mode. Another big issue, as I mentioned earlier, is the fact that you have to be online to play single player. Overall, with all the negatives that I have brought up, the positives are very strong. It is fun playing with the game of survivors that know what they're doing. It is fun playing as the demons, no matter which one you're picking, and figuring out what you're doing wrong, what you're doing right, and especially when you get those clutch victories either or it's one of the most fun games i've played thus far in 2022 but there is a lot of flaws there is a lot of lacking content and it makes me worry about the future especially when it comes to the player base how many people are going to stick around and say six months to a year to be playing this game that will allow for players both new and old to really enjoy what this game has to offer if you're into these type of games if you're into these 4v1 asymmetrical games Pick it up now. Start playing it now. <laughs> Do not wait. Pick it up now. Thankfully, it's only $40, too, so it's a budget title, and it's worth all the money if you enjoy these type of games, but you should play it as quickly as possible because if you wait too long, you'll be left so far behind, you will not be able to enjoy what we are enjoying right now. So there you have it. This has been so full lordy. James Bullock, once again, with another video game first impressions. Evil Dead the Game. For the PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, Xbox One, Xbox Series X, and S, PC, and Nintendo Switch. So if you don't mind, I'm going to go back into the world, try to find these pesky survivors. And if I can, with my girl Henrietta, I will splash damage everyone, destroy the Necronomicon, and make the world say, Oh lordy!